Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back. It is another episode of our Southern California First Time Buyer Market Update. This is for October 15th, 2021. I cannot believe it. Two weeks uh, or so, and we will be into Halloween, uh, which is, of course, uh, kind of, I can't believe we're here already. Uh, my name is Stephen Mead. I'm your host uh, with Domicile Real Estate, where we are on a mission to help California's renters become homeowners and um, you know, I, I want to talk about something that I think a lot of first-time home buyers need to hear. And and you know, I I grew up mostly in California, and I remember as a kid something I learned how to do very early on, but it took time, and I wasn't very good at it at first. And that is, when you are young and you go to the beach, or if you haven't been to the beach, there are a lot of things that are dangerous at the beach in the water right, if you're a kid, um, between riptides, between jellyfish, between being able to predict how the waves work, right? Um, th there are a lot of sort of perils out there. And when you're young or inexperienced, it's very hard to read the water very well. And we are in a real estate market that feels a lot like that to me. It, it's like this world where things happen almost unexpectedly and there are dangers around every corner. And I remember as a kid, I was very stubborn. And I remember I just, you know, I was like four years old and I'm like running, breaking away from my parents' hands, running into the water. And of course, what, what happened, you know, a wave, a wave crashed on me. And it makes me think of something that happened this week. And you know, there's this question of real estate is, you know, there's this fine line when you work with an agent, one of the things you do is you want to get advice and perspective, but at the same time, your agent is not you, right? And it's not gonna make the same choices maybe that you would make or that's right for you and your family or whatever, whatever your particulars are. And so there's this fine line between giving and receiving advice and how much, how much advice you know, do you really want as a first time home buyer? And normally I would say, draw the line where somebody isn't just where somebody's actually telling you what to do versus when they're just telling you maybe things to think about. But in a market like this, I feel like maybe it's important to lean on that agent and, and their experience a little bit more. You know, sometimes, you know, I have some clients, I, I literally talk them out of buying a house, I think. Uh, not buying a house in general, but buying a, a particular house. And I, I think they may have taken a little bit of offense to it. I, I stand behind. I really don't think that was a good house for them. I don't think they wanted to pay what it would take to get that house. And I think they can frankly do a lot better. Um, and, and surely it would be less work for me if they had just bought that house. But I don't, I don't think that's the right one for them based on kind of other things that they've told me. Um, you know, and, and I'm afraid they may be a little bit, bit offended by, by kind of how much I leaned out there. But my advice to you if you're out there in that world is have frank conversations, be open with whoever you're working with, whether it's us, hopefully, but even, even if it isn't, um, be open with that. So let's get started on the stats this week, kind of see where we are. Um, you know, this market is not getting better maybe in the way that I think some first time home buyers would like. So coming back to closed prices, if you are in our entry level market segment for a detached home, three bedroom, two bath in LA and Orange County, um, you know, we're close to a price high. This date is four to six weeks old. I, I think, like I said, same message as before, we're seeing inflationary increases in pricing. Um, the condo market took a dive. I, I'm not so sure that that is, there's not nearly as much data in the condo data. We don't have as much, a sample size as big. And so what I think happens is this moves around a little bit more, but you can look at the shape of the curve here. And you'll notice too, that sometimes that condo market just dives like that for some reason. If we look at where we are in terms of payments, you know, you know we saw interest rates jump a little bit, but then they've been kind of holding steady. And I think that's reflected here. We're not at our high payment. I mean, right now, our 25th percentile entry level home is 4,041 a month. But back in May, that number was $4,150 a month. So we're really kind of holding the line 
on that level of affordability. And I think that's really some good news. If you're, if you're looking for some good news in this update, if you're a buyer, you, you haven't missed your opportunity. You're, you're not really substantially that much different than we've been for the last several months in terms of what you're paying for that median home. Now, kind of looking at entry-level condos, the, these numbers look really good, 2971. Again, I think that's a little artificially low, but you know, these interest rates have kind of, they're kind of towing that line and we're not seeing huge jumps. Um, you know, going back to this household income figure, again, right around hundred grand minimum income to do 5% down on our entry level single family home, just around $73,000, 75,000, it kind of fluctuates in there. If you're looking at that entry level two bedroom, two bath condo. And again, this is an aggregate for Los Angeles and Orange counties. Um, so obviously your individual market area might be a little bit different than these numbers, but these are kind of to give you an idea over time. You know, this is kind of a little bit of mixed, mixed, I don't know, news. I, I still don't think it's great news for a buyer because I, I think if, if you're a buyer, and what, what I'm hearing from a lot of buyers is I think a lot of people, I'm going to go off screen for a second. A lot of people are holding their breath and they're, they're kind of holding their breath, sort of like waiting for this moment or this sign that now they should jump in. And, and un unfortunately, um, you know, whether you are religious or not religious, um, you know, the, the signs like that are, are never that obvious and they're not as, as frequent as you might hope they are. And, you know, I feel like a lot of people might run out of breath before they see something that gives them that definitive level of confidence. Instead, you know, the advice I give to somebody is I say, don't focus on the deal, focus on the house. And that means the right house might come up next week or it might come up a month or two from now. But when it does, you wanna be in a position to move on it and, and, and kind of go down. I think you'll get a lot more directive on what's the right house than you will on what's the right time. I think it's a lot easier to figure out what's the right house than to try to guess what's the right time. So kind of, kind of bear that in mind for those of you out there. You'll see that our, our absorption rate is, you know, I mean, it dropped a couple percentage points on a single family home, but it's still in the 90s. That is very competitive. Um, our condo dropped to 81%, um, you know, which, which is an improvement, right? But I mean, 81% I, I, is not, a buyer's market. It isn't. It's not even close to a buyer's market. So I think for those of you kind of waiting for that moment where you're going to have be able to pick whatever you want and have no competition, I, I just don't see that happening in this in this foreseeable future. Total inventory, um, you know, it continues to kind of fade out as we head towards the end of the year. I, I do think it's important to note inventory is a bit lower this fall than it was last fall. So if you feel like there's not as many houses available, that's true. This is obviously price range dependent. Um, you know, if you're looking between two and $3 million, well, there's a lot more inventory available to you, right? But if you are in that sort of entry level category, there's not a lot of inventory out there. Uh, our condo inventory is still very, very, very low. I mean, look where we were compared to last year. It, it's bounced back a little bit, but I mean, really, there's just a not, not a lot in the market. And I think what's happening is, you know, condo buyers are our are, are biggest move up buyers, right? Like they will buy a condo and then they're going to be looking for a house. And I think they feel like they can't get a house. So we're just not seeing those condos come on the market like we normally would. If we look at our 14 days still active, um, we see a kind of a reduction in the competitiveness of our condo market and an increase in the competitiveness over here of our entry level single family home market. Again, as a reminder, everybody lower is more competitive on these numbers. Um, so when it goes up, it's, it's less competitive. When it goes down, it is more competitive. Uh, and finally, let's, let's talk about that supply and what that supply means, right? So if inventory on condos didn't go up but weeks supply went up, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that buying on condos slowed down a little bit. But you know our, our inventory has not gotten any better relative to buyers on single family homes. Single family homes are still out there. They are still writing offers. Um, you know They're still out there competitive in the marketplace. I know I talked about this, I think last week or one of, in one of our other videos, 
one of the things I've mentioned is that we're kind of seeing a non-homogenous market. And, you know, that's just a fancy way of saying, you know, the most desirable houses get tons of attention and the less desirable houses get less attention. Uh, you know, what does that mean for you? Uh, look for the less desirable ones. If you're having trouble, uh, try to have an open mind, try to think of what are the ways you can add value to a property because suddenly that makes sense. Earlier this spring, you know, when, when a fully remodeled one went for, let's say a million bucks and a one that was not very remodeled at all went for 925, it didn't make a lot of sense. You should just pay the million and get the one that's remodeled if that's in your budget. But now that price spread is widening a little bit because that competitive level is widened, right? So when that happens, there's more of an opportunity to add value to properties. Um, that's all I've got for you this week. I, I know we talked a little bit too much at the beginning or maybe a little longer than usual, but I think that's really important to understand that relationship and, and advice and kind of asking tough questions and, and maybe even kind of, you know, kind of having a little bit of a sense of perspective and accepting that. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, hit that notification bell. Obviously, if you are looking to buy and you'd like to have an introductory conversation, uh, we have a link down below if you're watching on YouTube where you can sign up for that. Um, and also, um, you know, well, obviously we'll see you next week with our full market update that comes out on Tuesdays. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again real soon.